you're a fan of the Hartford Yard Goats, big changes are coming to that neighborhood. A lawsuit over Duncan Park and who should build on the land surrounding the park has been settled. I spoke to the mayor about the bulldozers and the cranes that will be here soon. And with us now is the mayor of Hartford, Luke Bronin. Mayor Bronin, good to see you here in the program. Good to see you, Dennis. So you must be relieved to have this lawsuit finally settled. I am. I think it's the right thing for the city. You know, look, this thing's been hanging over the city's head for a long, long time. You know, when I came in, that baseball park project was off the rails, and one of the first missions, uh, at the same time we were battling a fiscal crisis, was to try to get that baseball park built and do it in the responsible way that, you know, um, it was fair to the taxpayers of the city of Hartford. So we uh, fired the contractor, called the bond. As you know, the insurance company ended up paying $34 million. Under this settlement, you know, we pay $9.9 .9 million, which is a fraction of what the insurance company paid to finish the job. And of course, it's a small fraction of what uh, they were seeking in this lawsuit. So people in Hartford and visitors to the Yard Goats have noticed these empty lots around the stadium. What will be there now that this lawsuit has been settled? Well, look, this is really important because those empty lots were in many ways the heart of the promise that the prior administration made to the community about this development. It wasn't just meant to be a baseball park. It was meant to be a broader development that would connect our north end to our downtown and create hundreds or you know, more than a thousand units of housing. You can see the first phase of that already gone up. You know, the pennant, which is uh, in one of the lots next door, uh, was built a couple years ago. It filled up as quickly as it came on the market, and now it gives us a chance to extend that development across to the other side of the ballpark. It'll be hundreds of residential units as well as some retail on the ground floor. And then you couple that with the additional parcels to come and the 12-acre uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic campus that's next door to the ballpark. And what you have is a real neighborhood that uh, fills in that sea of surface parking with mixed-use development and does knit our neighborhoods back together. It's certainly exciting to have new buildings. And as we look at this beautiful city from our Hartford newsroom here, there are some really architecturally yeah. significant structures here. And some say that some of the new buildings, not only built in Hartford, but built elsewhere, just sort of are bland and uninspiring. What would you like to see built there? Well, <laughs> what I, look, I, I think the building that went up recently, you know, it looks, looks great. I think that uh, we have incredible history in the city. We've got incredible uh, arch architectural legacy, but you also have a lot of empty spaces where those historic buildings were torn down. And more than anything, I want to recapture those blank spaces, you know, recapture uh, those surface parking lots and make them uh, alive again with, with people, with people who are making it their home. And as we do the work of filling up vacant retail spaces, you see places like Pratt Street that are now, you know, every storefront under construction, under contract or open. We need to make sure that they've got the base, uh, the residential base to support it. Absolutely. We will take a deep dive into your legacy yeah. and a walk down memory lane in a couple of weeks before Sounds you leave good. office on New Year's Day. Thanks, Mayor Luke Bronin, thanks for being with us here today. Thanks for having me. An aerospace company from South Korea is expanding its footprint in Connecticut, choosing Cheshire as the headquarters for its international engines business. Governor Lamont joined executives from Hanwha Aerospace today as they announced the huge commitment to our state. It has more than 1,600 employees worldwide with more than 600 in Connecticut across four facilities. The company is now expanding its location in Cheshire, creating a big hub for global operations. You can't fly without Connecticut, as Paul Lavoie likes to say. And uh, Pratt Whitney is a big part of the reason that is true. And now, so is Hanwha Aerospace. Hanwha says it shows Connecticut as the center of this global division to take advantage of the skilled workforce and its proximity to customers like Pratt & Whitney. An iconic Italian restaurant in Hartford South End is planning a comeback, but in a new location after it shut down as a result of the pandemic. Carbones is looking to reopen and relocate from its landmark location on Franklin Avenue, where it first started welcoming customers in 1938. The owners are eyeing a spot in downtown on Front Street, right in the heart of the city's Adrian's Landing District. The Capital Region Development Authority first needs to approve the project, and then the restaurant's loan request has to get the backing of the State Bond Commission. When we come back, you'll meet a Gold Star family who lost their son in combat.